اجلاس رسمی پارلمان اروپا سخنرانی های نمایندگان در جریان تصویب قطنامه تاکید نمایندگان بر لزوم تغییر شرایط حقوق بشر در ایران ضرورت تأمین حفاظت مجاهدان مستقر در لیبرتی در اجلاس رسمی پارلمان اروپا در روز پنجشنبه سوم آوریل چهاردهم فروردین که در آن قطنامه پارلمان اروپا در مورد استراتژی اتحادیه اروپا در قبال رژیم ایران و مشروط کردن آن به موضوع حقوق بشر به تصویب رسید شماری از سخنرانان درباره نقض وحشیانه حقوق بشر در ایران و سیاست های سرکوبگرانه رژیم آخوندی و ضرورت تأمین امنیت و حفاظت مجاهدان مستقر در لیبرتی تاکید کردند Interim agreement has proven that sanctions against a clerical dictatorship are really biting. It's clear that only the economic pressure and growing isolation of has made Iranian leaders to look for more flexible options. What is crucial now? Not to make premature concessions. We need to be careful and demanding until the final agreement has been reached. It's not yet the case. Final reduction of sanctions can take place on condition that Tehran agrees on a massive reduction of its nuclear infrastructures, that they allow unannounced inspections, and that they address the systematic build-up of missile capability. Second, any agreement must be linked to a credible change in Iranian human rights policy. Iran is still the leading country for, as for executions and torture, and is continuing under the new president. Finally, Madame Ashton has not managed to achieve security for Iranian opposition inmates in Camp Liberty. They are hostages of Iraqi security forces. Up to now, 116 have been killed, and there were 1,000 wounded. So the forthcoming summer would be very critical for the lives and very existence for this opposition. Thank you. <coughs> Some people think that President Rouhani is a moderate. I disagree. In 2013, 660 executions took place in Iran, two-thirds under the authority of Mr. Rouhani. He also appointed Mr. Abu Talebi as the Iranian ambassador to the United Nations. He was one of the students who seized the American embassy in 1979, so he's a terrorist. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Zarif, recently led a wreath at the grave of Mr. Mugnegi, who masterminded the bombing of U.S. Marines in Lebanon in 1983. At the same time, Camp Liberty is under siege and nothing is done about it. These are not really signs of confidence-building measures. Iran has the determination to continue enrichment and the development of missile technology to construct a nuclear weapon. We are not stopping the process, but just delaying it. We have to be much stricter. Now Iran is fooling us, but perhaps some people here want to be fooled in order to continue daydreaming. I wish Commissioner Ashton all the best in the future, but I do hope her name will not enter history as the Chamberlain of our times. Thank you, President. Thank you. One minute for Mr. Vlasak. Thank you, Mr. President. In this debate on the situation in Iran, I'd like to warn against uh, sidelining human rights. As a Czech citizen, I still remember the dangers of neighboring countries ignoring the trampling of human rights in a given country. There are no signs of positive development in Iranian human rights. The number of public executions is still increasing. Last year, 700 people. Soon, a 26-year-old girl is to be executed. The refugees uh, f who escaped from Camp uh, Ashraf uh, are now uh, being tortured in Iraq. 
There is also the fate of Christian Pastor Aberdini. I have been highlighting cases for many years and I believe that any relationship with the Iranian regime has to be on the basis of a significant improvement in the human rights situation. Thank you, President. When you talk about Iran, we shouldn't forget 3,000 refugees from persecution in that country. They've been held prisoners, uh, first of all in Camp Ashraf and now in Camp Liberty. But I and many other colleagues have raised the unacceptable situation of these people, despite which last September, some of them still being in Camp Ashraf, there was an armed attack which led to the massacre of 52 innocent refugees and opposition representatives, probably with complicity from Iraqi forces. Their bodies have disappeared, they haven't been handed back to their families, and even the Iraqi government uh, has hidden them somewhere unknown without a proper burial. During the attack, seven hostages were taken away, including six women, and nothing more is known about them. These are crimes against humanity, and I can't understand why Lady Ashton has not taken up a position strongly condemning the Iranian government and regime. On the contrary, she went there to uh, pay homage to Rouhani wearing a veil. Thank you, Mr. President. I should like straight away to say, as Vice Chair of the Delegation for Relations uh, with the Iranian government, that I entirely disagree with this optimism that we've been hearing about for some time. It led the delegation to travel to Tehran without any European People's Party participation a visit which produced nothing more than advertisement of the current Iranian government. It led Lady Ashton to Iran. The Iranian president is trying to be more moderate than his predecessor, and previous speakers have already said what his attitude is uh, towards freedoms that do not prevail in that country. And we reply with as much hypocrisy saying that this relationship, this government must be moderate because we want an economic relationship with it. If you think only about the economy and ignore principles, it's not just countries but civilizations that fall. I hope that the European Union will stick firmly to the principles for which it born and according to which it lives. That is to say, to force these countries to change radically as they need to in the interest of their own population. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Minister, a few weeks ago, the Polish Foreign Minister Radosław Sikorski went to Iran. There was a funny yet sad incident. At the press conference, Minister Sikorski talked about cooperation, economic cooperation with Iran. He talked about the nuclear program as well. But he also talked about human rights and uh, freedom of speech and uh, censorship. And he also tweeted on the subject of human rights and freedom of speech. That tweet was censored by the Iranian authorities. And so only part of uh, Minister Sikorsky's tweet was visible. That's uh, a trifle, perhaps, but is, it is evidence of the internal situation in Iran, the way human rights are treated, journalists are, are treated, and the situation with freedom of speech. And we have to point these things out to Iran. Our report makes clear how important a role Iran plays in its region. Thank you, Thank you President. And the approach of the Iran, of the Iranian regime is amply illustrated if you look at the military aspect of the nuclear program and here the close involvement of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in international drugs smuggling and drugs trade because 
if you look at the way that things are unfolding, you'll see that Iran is actually playing a very active role in this. At the same time, it's clear that the self-same Revolutionary Guard is actually a big player in the heroin industry in Afghanistan. <laughs> now, we're seeing sons and daughters of people being destroyed by the Revolutionary Guard through their involvement in the drugs trade, and here we need to look at the tentacles of the Revolutionary Guard, which spread across the world, even to the North America, and we need to look at the role of Hezbollah as well.